us together. We present to you this walkway to be set apart in the service of Christ's holy church. All things come from you, O Lord, and from your own gifts do they give to you. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Show your servants your works, and your splendor to your children. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you put it into the hearts of your people to make offerings for your servants and have been pleased to accept their gifts. Be with us now and bless us as we set apart this walkway to your praise and glory and in memory of Fred and Lillian Petroselli, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, Steve Hurd is going to say a few words about his inspiration. Steve's wife. Where's Denise at? No, where's Denise at? First off, um, thank everybody for coming. And it, this, this structure, this walkway, uh, very first, made possible by generous uh, giving of, of Fred and Lillian uh, on the bed. And we, we missed them. I wish I could share it with them. I wish Lily could watch me talk with my hands like she always did, and she laughed at me and waved her hands around when I, when I talked, and we had a little fun with that, so I do miss that. But um, uh, a couple, just a real quick couple things. Uh, Greg Hegel is standing there, and probably don't want me to say anything, but he's the contractor for this project, and, and without him, this wouldn't be here. Yay, thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as you know, inspiration for this, I, I, I hope it's obvious um, that the arches are what we you know we started with the first first building. Um, just trying to keep in, in that feeling and, and kind of create a cloister here for us, which we didn't have before. We had two buildings that were of, of equal value. I think it is the, the unfortunate piece in the middle. Um, it, it, had, it had a long life. It lived its its purpose, and it just it was it was time to go. Um, so with that, we I think we've replaced replaced with a nice nice piece and a, and a, a covered walkway, which we it's been using, but now it's a little ceiling taller at the very least. So, but one one thing I did, and I'm, I'm I can't be short. I think um, it's just as a as a memorial. For this and take away, I guess. And Laura, is, is that right? I, I've cre I created some pieces to take away. I got one for you and one for your the well the, the five siblings, however that. And the, I did want to ship some, but I want you know did that for, for you guys. Um, and then Bishop has one too. <laughs> um, but I just I just wanted something to that you could take away if you can't be here for this. I just think it's a uh, it, was, it was something to remember about. So I hope you hope you enjoy it. But we can we deal with that in a minute. I think I'm done. <laughs> so just a few words around the history of this. Or you know, I just think it's, a, it's such a blessing that we can come together and celebrate this dedication. It is such a it's, it's an amazing structure. And even though it's quite simple, it's just a walkway. I really learned from this as it was going up the transformative power of good architecture. And so thank you, Steve. What really strikes me, and if you have a chance to walk through here, even on a stuffy day like today, you feel the breeze as you walk through each one of these. And that just reminds me every time that Holy Spirit is there. And that Fred and Lillian, and it warms my heart. I will add a little piece that Mark just made sure. Um, between that first and second arch, uh, we interred Joseph. So, Aww. which was Lillian's dog. So, um, you know, as you know, it was made. It, this whole walkway was made uh, possible by a very generous uh, gift from Fred and Lillian uh, and their estate. Thank you, Laura, for all you did to help us get that. And, and he, uh, as you, those of you who knew or know Fred and Lillian know that they were each outsized individuals in their own part. You know, Fred, the kind of flirty, rambunctious kind of <laughs> tell jokes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Lillian, Lillian was the director. Yes. <laughs> Lillian made yeah. sure things happened. You knew where you stood with Lillian. And I have it on great, great authority from Carolyn Scott that Lillian likes this place. <laughs> and I think you all know that if she didn't like it, we would know. <laughs> we would be the first to know. So this rain this morning had me a little worried. Uh, there are a whole bunch of folks that made it, played a critical role in making this happen. Laura, you and Peter, and uh, 
all that, you know, we just, uh, all the work you've done, making sure that we got this, got this, uh, we hope we've done justice, and, and it will forever live in, in their memory. Uh, Liz Adams, who funded the vastly improved ADA compliant handicap. So thank you, Liz. Uh, to uh, members of the vestry of both last year and this year, uh, the building committee, which included Brett Hardison, who relentlessly kept us moving forward. We're not going to know what to do with our Tuesday afternoons now because Brett's not going to have us <laughs> taking off some lists. Uh, Steve Hurd, our architect, from whom you just uh, heard from. Carolyn Scott, who guided our aesthetic choices. John Churchwell, who kicked the project off. Kathy Schmelz, uh, who's our finance manager, who's not here, but she made sure the bills get paid and will get paid, Greg, so. <laughs> <laughs> to Peggy Cromwell for keeping us light during some of the stressful times that we had we had during this. And, and also, most of all, thanks to St. Peter's, the members here, our neighbors who lived with a hole in the ground for six months uh, and didn't complain. So for the folks of you who came, uh, in a way, that's where this last in-between period has been a blessing because we could actually take care of this. So, And most of all, just thank you. Fred and Lillian. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. So Greg asked me to write a little reflection. Um, and of course, on I'm going to instead of Murphy's Law, I'm going to call it Bishop's Law. <laughs> Whenever the bishops around or coming around, everything that possibly can go is going to go. <laughs> so that's why I'm having to read off my tablet because my laptop won't print. <laughs> From John 3, 8, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And to reiterate what Greg said, once they got the old building torn down and the framing of this space began, whenever we would walk out here, which was pretty frequently, we would marvel at the openness that the space provided. I guess we didn't realize the radical physical change that would take place just by removing one structure and replacing it with another. And I know we haven't been through an Arkansas summer just yet, but so far there is always a little breeze right through here. There's definitely a pleasant feeling here, even when there's no one around. And having everyone here today makes it even better. And nothing, nothing would make Fred and Lillian and Peggy, and Gail, and Mike, and Norm, and Linda, and all the rest any happier than having us all here together. In his book, Cloud Walking, Bishop Stephen Charleston wrote the following for June 6th, way back in 2013. Hope does not fall from the sky. It is a feeling made as often as found. We generate hope. We create it and share it and sustain it with our own determination. With every breath we take in life, we have another moment to express our hope in what is to come. Our hope is not a wish, but a commitment. To say we have given up hope means that we have given up our willingness to keep producing it. God, keep us from such resignation. God, give us the spirit to always be a source of hope, a life of hope, for all to see and share. My hope is that by opening up our physical campus, we will be ever more encouraged to open up our entire presence here in Conway, to open up to all the aspects of our ministries here to be more fully present to the people around us who are on the margins or searching or lost. I can envision when all the landscaping is completed, a crowd of people in the backyard sharing a meal or celebrating the Eucharist at the stone altar, I can envision groups of youth or college students sitting around the fire in a fellowship. I can envision St. Peter's becoming a more and more integral part of Conway. We've opened our campus. Now all we have to do is open our hearts and minds to the possibilities of what we can become, a place of sanctuary and hope and a spirit-filled testament to the love of God in Christ. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servants, Fred and Lillian, and we pray that, having opened to them the gates of larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who faithfully served you in the past, 
they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.